tonight. Or would I lie to you? She's a daytime queen. It's Trisha Goddard. He's an American dream. It's Rich Bull. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, he's Trim and Chisel. It's Ben Shepard. He's Grim and Grizzle. It's Frankie Boyle. And their team captain, Lee Mack. But first, please go crazy or at least slightly demented in appreciation of your host, Angus Dieter. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where lying is not just tolerated but actively encouraged. There are occasions in life when we have to lie, whether we like it or not. After all, we're never going to be able to park that close to Tesco's unless we at least fake a limp. <laughs> and there is a medical condition in which people can't help but lie. It's called being a sun journalist. <laughs> and according to psychologists, you can generally spot liars by the fact they use very few hand or arm gestures, uh, which is why you should never trust any cast member of Riverdance. <laughs> Which brings us to round one, Home Truths, in which our panellists tonight are taking in turns to read out a statement about themselves and the other side taking in turns to look intelligent and work out if it's true or not. As yet, the panellists don't know whether what's written on the card is a true statement or an outrageous lie. So speed of thought, or at least avoidance of wide-eyed panic, is preferable. Tricia is first into the fray, so Tricia, your confession, if you would. <clears throat> I'm currently beating Jeremy Kyle five to three at Internet Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lee, your thoughts? How did this come about? On the internet. <laughs> well, how did you meet Jeremy Kyle? Not intentionally. Did you meet him when you were out trying to round up guests for both your shows? Just <laughs> <laughs> firing tranquilizer darts into farm foods? <laughs> <laughs> He was trying to avoid doing a lie detector show. Right. <laughs> Would either of your audiences know what a lie detector was? Surely you're just hooking chavs up to toasters. <laughs> Tell us what you really think, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold back. We actually we get a lot of Scottish guests, Frankie. Oh, I've noticed. I'm expecting you to appear any day now. The minute I start shagging my sister, I will do. <laughs> So, how did this come about, then? I have reason to believe I might have been set up. Did he groom you first? Is that what you mean? <laughs> we share the same... or we did in the past. Jeremy Carr's show has some ex-staff working on there. So, I... So, you set, well, got set up? No, right? Yeah, I think it was a joke. Ha, ha. They thought very funny. I think it's unlikely that any men play internet scramble. Maybe someone who's seen all the pornography in the world. <laughs> Otherwise, why would you bother? I'm veering towards saying that she's not telling the truth. What do you think, Matt? I think it's a lie. I think it sounds like the plot of the most dull ever romantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan as two oh, rival TV presenters. Yes! <laughs> God! It must, it must be a lie, mustn't it? That's a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie, so let's have the truth, Tricia. <sighs> well, you're going to kick yourselves because... Lie. It is a lie. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> yes, there you are. It is a lie. Trisha is not currently beating Jeremy Carr. 5 3 at Internet Scrabble. If she had uh, that much time on her hands, she would be a member of her own audience. <laughs> <laughs> of course, some people think of Jeremy Carr as just being a bully, but it's easy to forget that he's also a twat. <laughs> Next up, it's uh, Ben's turn to astound us. Ben, if you would. I've been offered £2,000 by OK Magazine for pictures of my dog's birthday. <laughs> What's your dog called again? John. 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 <laughs> my dog's named after my grandfather. As a kid, I grew up, my parents had, always all had Jack Russells, but they were, they were called Daisy and Feely, and I hated having to take them for walks. You know, walking your dogs as a teenager and you've got to shout, Daisy, here Daisy! And there's a nice looking girl walking past her dog, you look like a fool. I'm not convinced, you do look a fool. You're allowed to give dogs frivolous names. People don't expect Rover, what a stupid name, you should have called it Andrew. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> I've, always, I've always liked the idea of giving a dog a, a human name. An incredibly sensible, a crushingly sensible name. Have you given your dog a surname? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you invented a sort of fake national insurance number for your dog. <laughs> Listen, the, this birthday, what, you, it's birthday, is there a cake? Are I've there never, other dogs coming? Well, no, because I think, essentially, the idea being that <laughs> I, if I had a, a birthday party for the dog, then yeah. my family would be there and they would get sort of a family shoot as well. Is there to be a cake? Of course. They Made out of cake. chum or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a huge, the, horrible, meaty cake. They'll be <laughs> made, out, made out of the hooves of horses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, David, what do you reckon? Um, do you know, it's one of those, like, it could be true or not, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah, believe £2,000 is not a lot of money. It's a fortune to Jack Russell's. I don't think dogs are allowed legally to own money. Aren't they? No, there's a terrible fear that the Queen would leave the whole country to one of her corgis. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I, uh, I, I don't believe him. I don't believe him, but it's so <laughs> stupid, it just could be true. I think... I, I, no, I, I, I'm, I think it's not true. We okay, think it's a lie. So it's a lie, Ben, trying to fess up. Well, I'm afraid... It's a lie. It yeah. is a lie. Yeah. Well, it is. <laughs> I totally believed you had a dog called John. I Do you didn't. not even have a dog called John? No, I don't. Do you have a dog? No. Really? No. <laughs> no one would make up a dog name like John. Would you have a dog? I don't know. If you had a dog, would you give it a, a, a very normal doggy name or would I you give it something I, more individual? I don't know. I haven't... I, I, I've, I've Let's made a decision it. early on in my life. Don't <laughs> think of dog names before you have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> don't get distracted when you're supposed to be doing your tax. I'll tell you what I could usefully yes. do instead. Think of a name for my first seven dogs. <laughs> Um, yes, it is a lie. Uh, ben has not been offered uh, £2,000 by OK Magazine for pictures of his dog's birthday. Perhaps the most uh, famous celebrity dog in the world is Tinkerbell, belonging to Paris Hilton. And I'm sure if she could only speak, what incredible stories of showbiz decadence Paris Hilton could tell. <laughs> uh, Frankie, your revelation. I have rated 98% on a psychopath test. <laughs> I don't think this even needs to be discussed. No, we don't need to <laughs> <laughs> what, what is a psychopath test, just out of interest? Don't answer him, just stab him. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of is it, do, you have to, do you have to qualify to be a psychopath? Is it that kind of... It's the entrance exam. No, it's, it's just a thing I drifted onto on the internet. Can you recall any of the questions that were asked? I remember one about uh, what would I do if I saw a man drowning and in And what did you say? I just thought, fuck him. <laughs> Who would administer such a test? There's a, we there's a website of various, you know, tests you can... Oh. Yeah, psychometric <laughs> test things that you can... So it was 98% meaning that 2% of you is actually... Human. Indecent. I think to get 100% you'd have had to fill the test in in blood. <laughs> Which is very did difficult online. Did it change? <laughs> <laughs> you were trying to get 100%. Yeah, and you failed. Which is actually, we've all been thinking for a long time that all this nastiness, Frankie, is just a defence mechanism, isn't it? <laughs> You think in I want to reach out? No, I, I'm not saying... I, I certainly, <laughs> I'd certainly back off if you did. But I, but I could believe that you filled in the test yeah. and got the 98%. Yeah, and so, you're saying... So we say true. true. OK. Yeah. Tell us, is it gospel truth or a it confounded is lie? It's true. It <laughs> is absolutely true. Yes, it's true. Frankie has rated 98% on a psychopath test, putting him just ahead of Hitler, Pol Pot and Ceausescu, and just behind Simon Cowell. <laughs> and so to our second round, which is known as the Ring of Truth, until such time as we think of something better. Some tidbits of celebrity trivia for our panellists. All they have to do is decide whether it's nothing but the truth or nothing like the truth. Lee's team are up first with a question cunningly linked to this BBC News item. The managers are Swede, now the players are Melons. Amrat's a football-mad engineer, but he's also an artist, and he does a mean portrait using the medium of Melons. Amazingly, Amrat's only been carving Melons since January, but he's already got a cracking portfolio of Melons for all occasions. He's a hero of England, isn't he? That's why I put a bacon on a on melon. And with any bits of melon left over, just put them in the smoothie maker and blend it like Beckham. <laughs> So, the related fact uh, for Lee's team is this. Uh, David Beckham recites the alphabet backwards before every match. It is doubtful that he'd be able to do that. He can't find his mouth in that picture, can he? <laughs> David Beckham couldn't recite the alphabet forwards before every match. 
If you asked him to recite the alphabet backwards, he'd turn round and recite the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> when you say backwards, are we talking Z, Y, X backwards, or are we talking to... <laughs> I think this is, this is... I can't believe this is... This is obviously confusion with the... I know there is a true story, is that uh, Posh Spice actually regurgitates alphabetic spaghetti before she goes on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you know what makes it... And then whatever comes out, they use for the lyrics for the song. <laughs> So your decision on this one, is it uh, truth or a lie? I think it's probably true. I, I, I don't think it's true, but you think it's true, do you? What do you think, Ben? OK, I'm going to go with a lie then, but I think it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like the true middle-of-the-road GMTV presenter. <laughs> I'm going to go with my team and say it's true. They're saying it's true and I can tell you it is a lie. Ah. Sadly, David Beckham does not uh, recite the alphabet backwards before every match, although he did begin to recite the alphabet forwards once, which is why we didn't see him play for a year and a half. So, uh, <laughs> to uh, David's team, who have this to ponder. And your name is? Simon Curtis. Your occupation? Administrator. And your chosen subject? Is the films of Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, in two minutes. Which Jim Carrey film is his character's love interest dragged into a car by a father saying, Fiji, we're moving to Fiji. Oh, um, pass. The Grinch lives on which mountain overlooking the town of Whoville with only his dog Max for company and how the Grinch stole Christmas? Pass. In Ace Ventura, a pet detective, what's the name of the mental hospital of which Ace gets himself admitted in a search for clues for Snowflake, the missing mascot of the Miami Dolphins? I don't know, pass. In Final Dick and Jane, to which position is Dick promoted in Globodyne, the company which is a direct parody of Enron? CEO. Vice President of Communication. For which 1996 film did Jim Carrey sign a $20 million contract, which was a record amount for a comedy actor at the time? The Cable Guy. Correct. What does Stanley Ipkiss transform into after being a matador in the scene in the Coco Bongo Club when he shot at while wearing the mask? The film Simon Birch was adapted from the first chapter of which novel by John Irving? Pass. And I'll tell you, it's a prayer for Owen Meany. Eight passes, Simon Curtis, only one point. <laughs> Instead of going, you had eight passes in one... You should have gone, fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> You've wasted our time here! <laughs> It was when he did the general knowledge round and he actually got them all right, apart from that one bloody Jim Carrey <laughs> <laughs> uh, So here is the related Jim Carrey fact for David's team. Uh, while filming Me, Myself and Irene, uh, Jim Carrey missed his dog so much he bought him a three-bedroom house near the set. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for the guy who, who lives next door, who scrimped and saved all his life to buy a nice house. I wonder what the na neighbours are like. <laughs> oh, it's a Dalmatian. <laughs> You see, those aren't the words of a psychopath. <laughs> you care for that person who's yeah. scraped and saved. David, your um, answer. I think it's well, so weird it could be Well, true. it could, but the thing is, that's the trouble with these film stars. They could have done, they could, he could have done weirder things than that, but that doesn't mean it's exactly what someone would make up as well as the, exactly the yes. sort of thing he'd do. Um, I'm, willing, I'm willing to say, though, that he probably did buy a three-bedroom house. I'm saying that he probably did. Um, I, well, I'm very happy to go with the, will you kill the us team decision. Wrong? I won't kill you. Oh, I, no, it's I, him. I have, He's the killer. I haven't killed anyone for years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, you're saying it is true? True. OK, and I can tell you that it is absolutely true. No. Uh, well done. Well done yes. Yes, Jim Carrey did buy his dog a three-bedroom house near the set of his film Me, Myself and Irene. Uh, though the dog is now looking to sell up, so he's painting the walls a neutral colour, baking fresh bread and has stopped shitting on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, a quick check on the score shows that uh, it's David's team who are stepping on the gas, cruising into a lead of 3-2. This round goes by the half-baked title of This Is My. Each of David's team will boast a special link to tonight's mystery guest, but only one of them will be telling the truth. Can Lee's team tell the genuine from the fraudulent? Well, there's one sure way to find out, or we could play the game. So, please welcome this week's special guest person, Gareth. <laughs> so, uh, Tricia, what's Gareth to you? 
Um, this is Gareth, and he came on my show to um, cure his fear of <laughs> um, scotch eggs. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, Rich, perhaps you'd like to explain how you know Gareth. Uh, this is Gareth, and he he pimped my ride and uh, turned my car into the ultimate fishing mobile. <laughs> And finally, David, what's your relationship with Gareth? Uh, this is Gareth, and he freed me from a roller coaster when the car got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please let that one be true. Please. <laughs> so there you are. Uh, Trisha's phobic guest, a uh, car pimper, according to Rich, or a theme park rescuer, if we believe David. Uh, Lee's team, where do you want to start? Oh, definitely Trisha. <laughs> I've seen your show. He, they, you don't have people that have come on because they're scared. You might have come on because he had sex with a scotcher. <laughs> <laughs> scared of a scotcher. He had a bad experience. How does the fear manifest itself? He used to sort of um, get panicky and scared when he saw a scotch egg. Surely it's really easy to avoid scotch eggs. <laughs> I mean, well? there's a tiny section of the supermarket. <laughs> That you could easily walk round. Oh, I need to get some Baileys for Christmas. Oh, an egg! <laughs> what, if he, what if he loves pork pies? Yeah. Uh, name a supermarket where the pork pies aren't right next to the scotch eggs. <laughs> and what was your show called, that particular one? It was called, um, Fiancé, Your Fear of Scotch Eggs Will Ruin My Our Wedding Buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's insensitive. Now, that, again, to, to deliberately order the pyramid of scotch eggs. No, that your future husband's terrified of them. If I could uh, steer you towards one of the others. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about the uh, roller coaster? Which roller coaster? David, was it? Well, it was the runaway mine train. <laughs> there was. The idea was that a historical train by which mines were accessed, had run away with itself. <laughs> that would be scary. Where was it? It was Alton Towers. Alton Towers. And so how did you get stuck? Well, the, the, the train ceased to run away. It, <laughs> it, but it goes through lots of tunnels, and in one of the tunnels, it suddenly stopped in the dark. Right. right. And they said over the... Uh, there was a speaker, and they said, uh, stay where you are, we'll be sending someone. And it was... Gareth. I'm honestly struggling with the idea that you went for a day out to Alton Towers. <laughs> were, you, were you presenting a documentary for BBC Four about the horror of modern life? <laughs> they thought it was a National Trust home, didn't they? <laughs> There's yeah. absolutely no muskets on display here. <laughs> Well, Dave, David's not been on a ride and got stuck, has he? No, David's never been on a ride. <laughs> I have. I was on a stag do. <laughs> That's where people like me have to do things that they wouldn't otherwise remotely want to do. What about Rich's car, Pinder? Rich, uh, your car was turned right. into a fishing mobile. What, was, what is the car? What was it? What made? It's not a car, actually. It's a small pickup truck. So how did it turn into a fishing mobile? Well, basically, there's just two big all-weather bucket seats in the back that you can sit on and fish without and swivel. It has a rack for uh, fishing rods, and the glove box folds out, and you can tie flies on the glove box. No, it sounds like he's doing drive-by fishing. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to get out of your truck. So he's not done much pimping, has he? All he's done is took a better pickup truck, stuck some fishing rods in and a bucket. Okay. <laughs> can't pimp my ride, it's stick a bucket in my car, is what it should be called. <laughs> Am I right in saying that the phrase pimp my ride means modify my car? Yeah. <laughs> You can either go for the Scotch Egg Fairing guest on Trisha's show, Rich's uh, personal car customizer, or David's roller coaster saviour. Well, look, right. Trisha's thing is just madness. Right? <laughs> if David had to go on a stag party, he'd insist that it all got changed and they went to Venice. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that makes me think David might be telling the truth is that. Gareth fella, though, has got the look in his eyes of a man who has, at some point, is like, spinned a waltzer and tried to chat up a 14-year-old girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it can be Scotch Egg Boy, because he wouldn't want to come on national television again to reveal he was scared of Scotch Egg. So, Lee, please, a decision. I've, I don't know why, but I think it's Trisha's telling the truth. No. <laughs> I do, honestly. Oh, wow. What do you think, Ben? What are you going for? I think it's David, but... I think it's Rich. And I think it's Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> so, simple decision. I'm going to go for Trisha. Lee is saying it's Trisha. 
Gareth, perhaps you'd like to reveal who you really are. I went on Tricia to kill my fear of Scotch eggs. <laughs> So, are you cured now, Gareth? I am, yeah. Yep. yeah. And the wedding's going ahead? It is, yeah. Congratulations and thanks very much, right. Gareth. Thank you. Well <laughs> Many thanks then uh, to Gareth. So, uh, Trisha's show did cure Gareth of his fear of Scotch eggs. Scotch eggs were created by Scottish cardiologists uh, looking for the perfect high fat snack to fit between heart attacks. <laughs> <laughs> While Trisha was working hard on the Scotch egg phobia, Jeremy Kyle reintroduced a mother and daughter after 30 years, solved a murder, and interviewed Jesus. <laughs> So at the end of that round, it's, uh, well, uh, both sides are still locked together, sharing as they do three points. And so to our final quickfire round, featuring more insights into our celebrities' strange worlds, this time against the clock, and remember the panellists have no idea what's on the card, a familiar truth or unexpected whopper. And just to confuse the issue even more, there'll also be a few possessions thrown in, which our panellists will attempt to convince you are their own. <laughs> Well, uh, neither team is in the lead, so both need the points uh, starting now. <coughs> David. Possession. Yes, if you'd like to look at the box beneath you. This is the lock of Steve Davis's hair, which I bought on eBay. True. <laughs> Absolutely true. You can move on now, Angus. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> right. Why, why, why did you buy it, David? I'm a fan of snooker and I was a bit <laughs> drunk. And that's sort of those wow. the confluence of those two influences. Are you a massive fan of Steve Davis then? Uh, well, he's very good at snooker. How, how many times did he win the World Championship? Six. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> Don't out bluff me, neither of us know. Yeah. <laughs> he won it six times, Hendry won it seven times. Oh, now that could be true. Let me have a closer look at it. Right. Run over then, come on, trot along. There we are. He'll, he'll nick the piece of hair. You watch, he'll nick it. Right, if you really love Steve Davis, this would really worry you. Whey! <laughs> Is that worrying you, David? Whey! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Is that worrying you? Does he look worried? He Is did it? look quite oh, concerned. Yeah. Who would make a thing like this? It must be true. But yeah. he did look quite panicky when I threw that up and down. So, so, I would so, say, I th what do you think, Ben? I think it's true. Let's go for true. I'm going to go for overrule you, if that's OK, and say it's not true, it's a lie. OK, they're saying it's a lie. David, the truth, please. It is, of course, a lie. No. Well, it's a lie. <laughs> yep, it's a lie. Uh, that is not a lock of <laughs> Steve Davis's hair bought uh, on eBay. An interesting fact about Steve Davis is an impossible sentence to finish. <laughs> uh, next, Frankie. Mm. I have written and published a book of love poems. <laughs> What's it called? Strangled Puppies? <laughs> it's actually untitled. Untitled? Oh, very cool. oh, yeah, right. Go on, say one then. Say a poem. I have a policy of never reciting. Come on! Poetry. It's to do with the whole thing is it's about the written word, not the spoken word. They're, you'd have to see them, but they're things that are only designed would it, would to be it, seen written. Would you be able to give us some of the titles of the individual poems, or would that they're also... Un, they are untitled. It's what, called sorry, untitled. It's untitled collections of untitled poems. <laughs> when did you publish this? What year? The it year was, was untitled as well. <laughs> 2001. Why? Right. Why? <laughs> Why does anyone write poetry? Some of us have uh, love that we want to express. <laughs> <laughs> so, Frank, who would your uh, influences be as a poet? Lots of different female poets. <laughs> 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 yeah. Really? Yeah. What would, what would the name of one of these female <laughs> poets be? An influential one. Yeah. yeah. And when yeah. did she live? <laughs> <laughs> what style of poetry did you use? I used an aggressive haiku form. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Now, either it's the most exceptional double bluff or it's a lie he literally didn't have the energy to go through with. <laughs> All right. Uh, Frankie, tell us the truth. It's in fact. It is a lie. <laughs> 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 
Yes, it's a lie. Frankie has not written or published a book of love poems. He was going to, but when he came to writing it, he remembered he hated everything. <laughs> <laughs> Next, <coughs> Lee. Possession. Right, if you'd like to look in your box. This is the coconut that nearly killed me. <laughs> is this believable? Um, where, where were you? Under a coconut tree, what do you think? <laughs> In which country? The coconut country of... <laughs> <laughs> Coconutia. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, uh, I was actually in uh, Thailand. I was in Thailand on holiday. <laughs> I was stood underneath. <laughs> I was stood underneath the coconut tree, uh, and well, oh, yeah. the oh. coconut fell off the tree, barely missing me. And you brought it home. Yeah. I'm suspicious because you're not allowed to bring fruit and vegetables from foreign countries into. Well, you made the classic mistake, haven't you, Tricia? Because a coconut isn't a fruit or a vegetable. <laughs> it is, in fact, a seed. It almost hit you. It almost hit, yeah. It like went whoosh, past my face, um, why hit my shoulder, bounced off. On yeah. The floor. Why did you decide to keep it? Yeah. <clears throat> because I thought it'd make a nice anecdote. Clearly, I was wrong. <laughs> At the moment of shoulder pain, yes. the moment when your shoulder has been yeah. bruised, possibly shattered by the coconut, yes. you think I must keep that for anecdotal reasons. <laughs> I, I don't want to be rude, but this is a coconut. It fell off a tree, hit me on the shoulder, but obviously if it had hit me on the head in the right place, I might have died. It's not as interesting a story as perhaps you think. I might actually elicit the response, if only it had. <laughs> <laughs> I, will throw this, I will throw this coconut at your head now, right? And I will, no, no, hang on, I will. No, I will, I will, no. David. No, no, Stop no, talking, then. Stop talking. I will throw this coconut on your head and hit you on the shoulder really hard. No, and thanks. I guarantee... Be quite yes, if they, an if they Don't see. push me, David! <laughs> Do not push me! <laughs> no one is insured for that to happen. <laughs> I think... I don't think it's... I don't think it's true. Um, but I'm willing to be overruled. I'm doubtful that if, if it did happen, that that would be the actual coconut. Uh, I don't believe it. I think lie. So, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. There we go. It is a lie, yes, this is not a coconut that uh, nearly killed Lee. Uh, every year, worldwide, some 3,000 people are killed by falling coconuts. Now, if you times that figure by 10, that's 30,000 people every year, which works out at nearly half a million people every 12 months. Spread that out over a year, that's 4.2 billion people killed by coconuts every month. <laughs> a frightening statistic. <laughs> Next. Which upsetting alarm means at the end of the show, it's David's team who have exceeded all expectations, having triumphed over Lee's team 7-5. We leave you with a reminder that, according to George Eliot, falsehood is easy, truth so difficult. But then again, what right has a woman who pretended to be a bloke just to flog a few poxy books got to tell us what's right and what's wrong? <laughs> Good night. Thank <laughs> you.